Finally! Oh, what I hold in my hand is potentially going to change the game forever. Hi everyone, Elliot here again, and in today's video, we are gonna be checking out the Odroid Go. Now this is an Odroid powered device, which is basically kind of like Raspberry Pi-esque. Um, it's just the competitor to that. I believe it uses um, Android or something similar. And uh, this has been put into a form factor which similarly resembles the Game Boy and essentially runs um, the uh, generic arcade um, operating software that you see on a lot of Raspberry Pis. Not entirely sure what it's called, but um, I'm kind of reviewing this more from an end user point of view as, to po as opposed to like a modder. Because previously, buying and making a Raspberry Pi Game Boy um, was pretty, wasn't very easily accessible for people who just wanna, you know, walk into a shop and buy one of these things. And for the price as well, $36. Unfortunately, it costs about 20 extra dollars to ship into the UK, which means the whole thing comes to about 40 pounds but 40 pounds. So this thing comes as a kit. Uh, you put it together, it doesn't require any soldering at all. You basically just plug the battery and the speaker in um, and you get you have to load the games onto an SD card and the software, but that's all very, very easy to do. Um, I'm not gonna go into the details of doing that in today's video, but I will in another one. So I just wanna say a big thank you to John um, over at RetroDX. I'll leave the link to his Facebook in the description, so definitely go check it out. He's um, very kindly lent this to me to make a video on, and he's also put some of his um, ROM hacks on here as well, um, which show his RetroDX logo. This is it here, and um, it has several different um, systems on here. At the moment, this has got the NES, the Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Sega Master System, and Game Gear. I'm sure it probably plays um, other ones as well. I can't imagine it's gonna play Game Boy Advance because it hasn't got any um, shoulder buttons. And it probably, it's probably gonna go up to about the Game Boy Color, but for me, that's absolutely fine. Um, it's a bit of a downside, to be honest, because the, uh, the Retro Mini plays Game Boy Advance games. But a lot of people wanted it to play um, Game Boy Color and everything games, and it didn't do that very well. I think there was a slight way around it, but it had a few issues. So in terms of not playing Game Boy um, Advance games, that is definitely going to be a pretty big downside. But I'm going to go ahead and show you the um, the gameplay first, and then we'll talk about a, a quick summary of it. So <laughs> you can see it's got a rude uh, version of Pokemon in there. And we'll have a look at retro, um, the Retro DX Zelda version, which is basically just a Zelda DX. There you go, so there is John's ROM hack. So he's put Retro DX, Our Awakening, Retro DX at the bottom there, 2018. Really, really cool. Fair play to him for doing that. I have no idea how he did that. Gameplay-wise, it literally is like you're playing on a AGS 101. It's just beautiful. The screen quality, it's pixel perfect. There is no sort of blurring or anything on the screen. Um, it is absolutely stunning. I'm not experiencing any lag. I haven't experienced any lag. It's not gonna be as perfect as a uh, Game Boy, but you gotta remember this is their first iteration of it. And it's only 30 goddamn pounds but it is just beautiful. It is absolutely beautiful. I'm so happy that this thing finally exists. It's like a dream come true. It's not even real. I mean, just look, we now actually have a viable, portable, modern handheld, which is easily accessible, no modding involved. You literally screw the whole thing together and it's just so much better than this. Look at the screen on this compared to this. Absolutely incredible. Unfortunately, it doesn't play, you know, your Game Boy Advance games, but it's not meant to, to attempt to be something um, like a Game Boy Advance, whereas this thing was really pushing it to be a Game Boy Advance, and it couldn't hack the Game Boy Advance games. There was just so much lag on it. This, for me, is just the most perfect thing. A lot of these things I review, and I'm going to be honest, I chuck them in a box or I give them away or something. This is something that I will certainly be using. Um, I just can't believe it finally exists. 
So another thing I would like to do between comparing these two things, because potentially quite a few people in America may be able to get one of these things for around the same price as they would be able to get a AGS 101 Game Boy Advance SP. So here's the Odroid Go by the uh, next to the AGS 101 um, Game Boy Advance SP. And as you can see, everything looks very, very, very similar. The colors are actually almost identical as well, which is um, very, very nice. The, the screen over here might look slightly different color-wise, but I'm pretty certain that's actually the brightness because in person, I'm not seeing any difference at all. The screen size as well, the aspect ratio is the same. Obviously, the AGS-101 can stretch somewhat, but so can this um, when it uses the, uh, the full screen in, say, um, NES games and whatnot, which plays as 4 by 3 as opposed to this... Uh, I'm not sure what ratio this is, but yeah, it's absolutely identical. They do a really, really good job here of... Um, of representing the, the games as truly as possible. So pretty stunning from that point of view. Honestly, this thing gets all my thumbs up possible. It's an absolutely beautiful console and I'm so glad that something like this has finally been released because we've gone through so many different um, potentially good ones to get to a finally a good one. Uh, this doesn't sell on AliExpress though, I should definitely point that out. This is way above that grade. The quality of the, uh, the plastic as well is gorgeous. Um, it actually rounds off the edges as well. Um, it kind of, there's a curve here. I'm not sure if you can see that. But the whole thing is just so, so nicely designed. And I love this uh, this clear look as well. Although I'm sure um, in the future there won't be, uh, there'll be solid colors because some people don't like this clear look. But it's really, really gorgeous. Um, I'm going to be doing a build of one of these soon in a couple of weeks time. So I just kind of getting the feel for how you guys like this thing. If you think it's as cool as I do, then definitely let me know in the comments down below. So I certainly don't claim to be any sort of modding and technical whiz expert. There's a lot of things that I still need to know, although there are a couple of things that I should point out about this Odroid Go. So I've got the facts up on my screen. It has two CPUs that can run independently at speeds from 80 megahertz and 240 megahertz. It is only running Game Boy games. Now, there are some far, far bigger Game Boy games um, that I didn't test out today. So Link's Awakening actually is quite a large game, although it is quite a simple game. If you start running slightly different, um, more CPU demanding uh, games such as like Mega Man and you're probably, once there's quite a lot of on screen, we may see some lag. I haven't actually done that much extensive testing yet. This is only a first look. I'm gonna be doing a build in a couple of weeks time. As I mentioned, I've ordered one. John's just very kindly lent me this. So far, this is definitely the best handheld that you can buy right now. Um, there's no doubt about it that this is the best thing you can buy. A lot of people um, would argue, well, why don't you go out and buy a Game Boy with a Raspberry Pi in it? Now, they're great, don't get me wrong, but they go for about hundreds and hundreds of pounds. Um, and if you want to make one yourself, again, it's going to cost you a couple hundred quid. And it, you, you need a lot of knowledge to do that kind of thing. Another really, really great thing about this as well is the buttons are actually the exact same size as a Game Boy Color. And so are the membranes underneath. So these ones right out of the box are a little bit stiff, which is okay for some people. Like John, for example, he said he's prefer he prefers the, uh, the button membranes being a little bit more solid and resistive. I am more of a traditional guy. I quite like them being a little bit softer, um, but I guess that's because we're used to using secondhand Game Boys, which are really, really old. So the button membranes are definitely a lot more worn in, but you have that option available to you and you can buy replacement mem membranes at any time from anywhere because they're the same size. You can even take them out of a Game Boy Color and, uh, and put them in there yourself. So that's really, really cool. If you guys buy one of these and you find out something that I haven't mentioned yet, which might be negative or positive, then definitely let me know down in the comments. This is a very, very early look at the uh, the Odra Go. This thing has not been out for very long and not a lot of people know about it yet. Um, and also, the software inside this thing is its first iteration. You know, there's, there's gonna be some changes made which might make the games boot slightly faster um, in the future and maybe even optimal settings to make it run better. But um, as I said, this is just a first look and uh, hopefully you guys have had some insight into how cool this thing is. I would definitely recommend going out there as soon as possible um, and buying one before they run out of stock completely. Um, but I really, really, really like what they are doing here. Massively like what they're doing here. I am so proud of this company for finally putting together an, an, an item on one board that just chuck a screen on it and put it in a housing and it works beautifully like just absolutely stunning. 
Really, really stunning. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. And I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.